Hello and welcome to this edition of Poor Reviews. We go back to Neolithic times, to Stonehenge. We don't ask the important questions though of how did they get there? What are they for? Is it really an astronomical stellar stargazing device for weird druids? No, we're interested in the reviews, but most importantly, the best reviews are the bad reviews, so they're the ones we're going to be looking at. So here we are, so the most famous set of rocks, stones from Neolithic times, Stonehenge. We start off with TripAdvisor. Hit it! Made of really old broken rocks and you can't even get close enough to write your name on them with an inedible marker anymore. Not unless you pretend to be a druid and hide it under your cheesecloth smock anyway. Disappointing for the kids who were expecting to witness a virgin sacrifice or an alien visitation or something sexy they could post on TikTok. <laughs> That's the modern era. TikTok. <laughs> So you can get close enough with it if you're going to write on it with an edible marker, but if it's an inedible marker... It's not inedible, not indelible. It says inedible. In, indelible. I can't read. <laughs> indelible marker, as in non-permanent. I can't read. Inedible marker. I thought it's, I said inedible there as well. All right, next one. <laughs> I was surprised they opened it to visitors before finishing it. We'll get another go when it's finished. <laughs> Those Neolithic people didn't even bother to finish. Not that they might have collapsed over the last few thousand years or something. It's just a bunch of rocks in a field. Wow. You have to excuse the sarcasm, but the reality is that this is exactly what this attraction is. You can't even go up on them. Yes, there's some historical background, but that can be said of plenty of other far better attractions that our country has to offer. Give it a miss, not worth the effort. Big piles of rocks in other places, interesting. Uh, but if they're in a field, then they're not. Yeah. I it's, think so. If, if, well, a big pile of rocks in the desert is a lot more interesting than fields. Okay, I'll take your word on that one. What you see driving past is what you see after paying an obscene amount of money. Expensive for what it is. Crowded, commercial... What does that say? I think it's meant to say commercialised, but it doesn't... I thought it was meant to... Okay, commercialised. The amount of merchandise is disgusting. As you can see from the screenshots, though, we are not making up these words when we mispronounce them sometimes. They are exactly as they're written. Maybe not indelible or inedible, but that was definitely not commercialised in any way or form. <laughs> It's a bit run down and looks very dated now. Could do with a clean and some fresh paint. Sadly, past its best. Right. Now, I did study with scenic artists, and I do know that some scenic artists are so good that they can make a piece of wood look like stone until so you go up and knock on it and, and, and you hear the sound. But I really think that the reason that Stonehenge looks like it's rock might be because it's rock and not painted but I might be wrong so Google reviews let's see not enough rocks they also want tell me where the secret artifact is oh yeah these are the, 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 jokes the secret artifact I could not touch the stones so I was angry could not acquire stone, sending this from jail. They charge £24 per person to see it. Daylight robbery! Thank you. Okay, well, at least we know the price now. But just um, so you know, if you are an English Heritage or National Trust member, it is free. The pricing on reviews was so inconsistent. Some people said it was £20, some people said it was £24, some people said it was 30 quid. Uh, there is one on TripAdvisor where it does take a picture of the pricing. Now, fair enough, for a lot of these reviews, for somewhere like Stonehenge, it is an international tourist destination. A lot of people from abroad will go there and will obviously pay that price because that is what it is. They're only coming over for the vacation for that short period. But it is, as I just said, English Heritage and National Trust, so it's free. So we're National Trust members, so we get them free. Yay! Oh yeah, there's lots of sites that cost money that we just don't pay for. Yeah. Well, we technically, do we? What? Do you technically pay for them? 
Well, yeah, there's a membership. It costs me like 120 quid a year. Yeah, but so I can visit hundreds of places uh, when they reopen after uh, after the lockdown. Makes sense. Like, subscribe, tell us what you want to see next time. Could be somewhere famous, could be a hole in the wall place that you just think the reviews are funny. Uh, but we'll see you um, next time. Bye bye.